is you, you got some time to react, and that's a pretty sick opening. Right, so Evan on the play here, down on four cards, starts with a stomping ground and an Elvish Mystic. And Temple had plenty of the play for Brenton. He really needs to draw some land. And he does. He doesn't have a lot going on yet, but at least he's putting some pressure down, and he has a scavenging ooze. So all things considered, not the worst four-card opening we've seen. Absolutely not. Heaven now with, I believe, just Dreadbore left over. So we'll see the extent of Brennan's hand shortly. He sure would love to draw Domri next turn. Maybe, uh, maybe just a, uh, you know, a fourth land or a third land. Stomping ground untapped for Brennan and passes the turn. What do you think about that? Just taking that damage. Well, to me, I, I, I think the most likely scenario here is that he has Celestia Charm, and that's going to be his target for a lot of his enchantments. Uh, you know, it's not, not the ideal enchantment target, of course. It's very susceptible to getting killed, but he needs to get the ball rolling. And with Evan on four cards and missing, you know, colored mana for some of his removal spells, it's not uh, the worst plays in the world. Do you, also, think, it, do you think it's possible he just blocks the, the scavenging ooze? Because, like, if Evan's down three cards, maybe a little bit of one-for-one -one attrition could go a long way. It's a possibility. Again, it's just an issue of, do you have something else to get all this, these enchantments on? Because Brennan has a lot of implied mulligans and dead draws in his, in his mm. deck, all the creature enchantments, until he actually finds a creature. So so you see the end of turn, Celestia Charm and a re-duke token. Now, uh, Unflinching Courage, uh, pretty solid here. The downside being, of course, if Evan draws a, a black mana, he actually can uh, make some serious headway in terms of catching back up. Yep, so he's going to play Unflinching Courage on his knight token, risks the possible removal spell here, and attacks for four. Yeah, I mean, he can't just hang out one way or the other. He's got he's to use these, these cards to press the advantage while he has it. Yeah. And Elvish Mystic... The draw for Evan, and now things are potentially really bad as he, uh, as Brennan can really start unloading next turn. Yeah, but even still, I think I think he's got one more turn because there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff coming down this turn, but it's not going to end it. And if Evan draws a black mana, he can dread bore, get out of this, and start calling his way back in. It's possible Brennan puts one, maybe two more enchantments. Probably want just the madcap skills here, though. No, not even the madcap skills, because that won't help him. The last thing he wants is to, to have his, uh, his only threat be to be eaten up. Because remember, this is only a four toughness creature. Evan could walk with, with all his stuff. And it looks like that's what we might see. Unless Evan gets greedy and just wants to hope to draw a black mana. And that's what Evan decides and says, I'll take the whole hit. A single black mana could, could make this a game again. And there is... Domri. So now if you're Evan, do you play the Domri? Or do you just, you know, suck it up and have to just triple block this time? I think that you have to play the Domri because the, the odds that he has something, he doesn't have some way to make his his knight even larger is so low that I don't think it's worth trying to play around. He's in a he's in between a rock and a hard place regardless from here. Well he's gonna have to block regardless, and it's gonna take two creatures. It's just that now there's... Okay, well, he's dead. You see his Johnny Caller Pride flying in double strike and a lethal attack. Shows the Dreadborn in his hand, which is actually interesting. I don't know, maybe these players have sat next to each other or know each other, but Evan didn't show any black mana in that game. Right. So revealing the Dreadborn is potentially a huge piece of information as we move on to the sideboard of games. Yeah, that's, that's like, uh, that's a real, real, I guess, emotional plea, you know? Yeah. So, uh, Brennan Cyborg has four copies of Skylasher, two Selesnia Charms, a Revoke Existence, four Mizium Mortars, two Mending Touch, a Gift of War Zova, and a Fiend Slayer Paladin. You know what's interesting? I don't think he would have brought in Mending Touch but if now, it were yeah. not for the Dreadboar. But now he's going to bring it in, and it'll probably be very good because Evan Nelson has access to two Abrupt Decays, one Doom Blade, three Ultimate Price, uh, two Golgari Charm, um, and he, that game, did not see the Hexproof creatures. Now, he knows that there's going to be some out there. How many of these spot removal spells do you even want here, though? Well, you definitely want Golgari Charm, as it is uh, an answer to 
uh, Glade Cover Scout also can just blow up enchantments. So that's, sure. a, that's a really good one. Abrupt and Abrupt Decay, Decay the sim similar thing. It can blow up enchantments. The rest of it, you know, the, the ultimate price actually has zero targets in this deck. It's hard to get away, you know, it's, it, unless you're really familiar with the list, your assumption would be, well, there's got to be something there for ultimate price. The answer is actually, no, there isn't. So the flexible removal of the rule that's capable of killing enchantments is very good. The rest of it, not so much. Now, what about Dreadbore? Are you looking to take Dreadbores out? I mean, that game, Dreadbore, would have been great, but it doesn't have very many targets at all. It's got, like, literally just Celestia Charm and Voice of Resurgence. Brennan just flashed a hi, oh, mom, Johnny. onto the screen, so hello to Brennan's mom as well. I think that Dreadbore is still good enough. You saw Johnny that game, so there's at least a Planeswalker target, and you can imagine that there's some stuff, and he probably can't cut all this removal. Uh, Busy and Mortars, I think, is still reasonable because overloading it, it can oh, be yeah, a thing. Very so much so. The, the removal is certainly, it struggles to be relevant, but there's so much in the list, it's hard to get away from it altogether. So the stuff that can blow up enchantments, that's at a premium, and then the, the, the other stuff that has some utility against even things as narrow as a Johnny, I think, are, are probably worth keeping in. Anybody else's mom you want to say hi to? Uh, no, not on air. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> we are in round seven of ten here in Seattle. Hi to my mom. You know what? That's what oh, I'm saying. Hello. Yeah, Wendy Chapin. Yes. You do it. You you do. You are awesome. Yes. So uh, I I met I met your mother for the first time at your wedding, uh, and prior to the wedding. Patrick and I played basketball that resulted in me unintentionally injuring you a, a reasonable bit. I went up and introduced myself to your mother at your wedding, shook her hand and introduced myself as Patrick, and she said, are you the man who hurt my son? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we had been playing uh, basketball in Vegas like uh, a couple weeks before and uh, uh, ended up breaking, uh, breaking some ribs. <laughs> Patrick... Sometimes you block one too many of his shots, oh, and oh, he gets a little, oh, he gets a little thirsty. I can't, I can't but believe message this is, received. I message can't believe, received. I cannot believe this is the way the narrative is being spun about what happened. <laughs> but anyhow, hello to Wendy. Hopefully, the the injury to your son is water on the bridge. But probably not. <laughs> if I had to guess. My mom is a gangster. Oh, yeah. She doesn't forget. Oh, yeah. All right, both players looking for uh, a good curve, a good distribution uh, of spells early on. That wasn't the finest showing from Nihex Proof. I mean, that wasn't what it's really capable of, but it was certainly more than enough needed to beat the Moldafor. It, it's tough because the deck plays so many, so many temples, both as a concession to mana and the fact that it's looking for interlocking parts. That actually is pretty slow out of the gates a lot of the time. It's not uncommon to see it just play tap lands for the first couple turns, eventually deploy a threat, and then you see the fireworks. But the first couple turns are often very little is going on. Yep, 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 yep. So Naya Hexproof looking to upset one of the uh, the big four. We've been seeing the uh, the stock-ish decks do very well, but Naya seems like it's got some good tools for this matchup. I do think that if the uh, the Jun deck comes out with a good curve, though, uh, I mean the Naya deck is not exactly set up to defend itself. So like, you know, at, at mo like it has two Celestia charms. Beyond that, there's really not a whole lot of ways to uh, to defend itself from something like, say, I don't know, a turn three Polychronos. Yeah, it's basically just unflinching courage and racing once yeah. it gets behind on the board. Now, do you think you bring in Gift of Orzova in this matchup? I do like it. The The, the Jun Monsters list and uh, Green Red Monsters are both pretty soft in the air, and they're also soft to lifelink. So Gift of Orzova is really well suited for uh, a number of tasks here, as you see Brandon open up with the scout. Untap Blood Crypt for Evan and passes the turn. Now, is he holding up Abrupt Decay Mana or Golgari Charm Mana, you think? I, I believe he has Golgari Charm in hand. Wow, so this could be a complete blowout in response to some kind of an aura. Yeah. Ah, Voice of Resurgence. A very, very smart play. Sensing that there's something is awry. Something's wrong, so this will expose it. You yeah, know? and at worst, he loses one card this way. Yeah. Very, very smart play from Brendan. Although, I wonder, do you attack first? 
it's I weird. Think so. If you just attack the, like, you're not going to, I mean, nobody's going to just Skylash her against Naya Hexproof, though, right? Because that's like the worst thing that could happen if you just attack. Yes, that is the worst thing. Although it's not unreasonable because the removal is so bad. If there was a Skylasher, it's not out of the realm of reason to bring it in here just because you have all these Doom Blades and Ultimate prices that really struggle to be relevant. Oh, yeah, and Skylasher trades with some stuff. I mean, I, I, could, see, I could see Skylashing against Glade Cover Scout. That's pretty sick. So we see an untapped uh, Tumble Garden before combat. Voice of Resurgence across for two. And then Witch Stalker post-combat. Uh, Witch Stalker? Witch Stalker. Yeah. This Stalker. And this is a creature very well suited for enchantments against Jun Monsters. Yeah, very, very much so. Particularly if you can ever get its toughness up too higher. You know, you put Unflinching Courage on this bad boy, now you can't even get Mizium Mortars. Yeah, five toughness is definitely the critical flashpoint. Yeah. A tapped Overgrown Tune from Evan. And now we'll see what Brennan can do with this Witch Stalker. A Temple. Looks like that card's going to the bottom. And an Ethereal Armor on the Witch Stalker. And what do you think about this line, keeping up both Celestia Charm and Boros Charm? Oh, it, it's, I, I like this line a lot. It gives uh, Brennan a ton of insurance. And also, if, if Evan is, just takes too many lumps, uh, Brennan can just kill him out of nowhere. Yeah, like trample over plus four to the face. Yep. So he does not play a second voice resurgence, instead keeping up all his tricks. He's like, I got enough to win with. I'm just going to nur you know, nur nurse this particular lead. Is this a defensive Storm Breath Dragon? It is. And it's particularly tough because it can't even block the Witch Stalker. All it's stopping is the Voice of Resurgence. Brennan draws. It is a Temple of Plenty. And we might see some giant growth and double strike action as well here. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a good 12. This is it, right? Yeah, it looks like it as we see Selesnia Charm on the Witch Stalker, moving into 6-6, six, six, and Boros Charm for Double Strike. Four damage would also get it done here, and that's... That's game! That should be it. So, Brendan Gould making swift work of Evan Nelson's Jund Monsters. We see another win from Nia Hexproof, advancing to 7-0. and oh. And this is one of the upstarts we were talking about, attacking yeah. outside of the Big Four. What I really like about Nia Hexproof uh, as a deck